you're not about to come into New York and, and the game be easy. It's on their home court, it's on ESPN2 again. I remember seeing a kid have a prolific prep shirt, and I'm like, we're in Canada. Excited matchup. We got a packed house here in Queens, New York, as we get set for the matchup with classic programs. We're talking about OSL, and then the crew is in the building. Prolific prep is here tonight. It's going to be a fun. One. Hey! Playing a New York team in New York, they're going to have the crowd, the energy from start to finish, pretty much, because everybody's on their side. And then you know, we're coming from the West Coast, the Cali team. Nobody likes West Coast. I know that New York style teams are real scrappy, like to get on the floor. I mean, just do all the dirty stuff to really win. Let's go! It's, it's a big game for sure, because you're not about to come into New York and, and the game be easy. A common theme for our group is anybody, anywhere, anytime. And so our Savior Lutheran in New York City uh, for their first home game was the first of many difficult uh, environments that we were going to play in. First possession to OSL. No getting their first set. Warren here with it for OSL. Nice little kickback set. Long three. And a knockdown there. And ball five going to AJ. It was very exciting. It was an exhibition game, but we didn't take it as an exhibition game. Uh, back and forth, up and down, up and down. We had to lead the momentum. We were hyped up before the game, uh, came out strong. We were up at halftime. And then just from there, it kind of tilted. It's a good environment for our guys. We started off really well defensively, then we let go of the rope. Uh, we've had good execution, we've had some bad moments. So we've got to tighten up here. This team is dangerous. Uh, Jackson and Moore can throw in shots at any time. So we got to tighten the rope a little bit. We're playing them real tight for three quarters, but not up to our standards at all. We were real disappointed in ourselves even at halftime. Three quarters through, we were like, geez, we should not be in a close game with these guys. Uh, this game lasted about three quarters, and then we let go of the rope. And so that's a theme for our group early on in the year, is when things went bad, it avalanched from us. And that game in New York, avalanched. And then it got to a point, and just in the second half, they just had momentum, that's really what it was. They kept ca capitalizing on plays, and on plays, on plays, and then we ended up digging ourselves into a hole. They walked us down, and then not only did they walk us down, they blasted us, and we got blasted again for the second time this year. So there's no more excuse about, we haven't been together, we've been together for like four or five months at this point. Maybe not playing games, but we know what each other does and what our, the makeup of our team is. Obviously, you know, we didn't have Tyron, that's a huge loss, but still, on paper, we have a bunch of guys who are high level, and going out and getting beat like that was embarrassing. This thing right now is about your culture, how tough you are, how mentally tough you are, and this is a long ass year. Um, in the locker room, we we talked about we're like one thing for sure, two things for certain. Like this will never happen again. I mean, that's a serious punch in the mouth right there by a team you're way better than. Right? It's not even like Columbus where you got the out of. You, you have, they've been together for a while, like, that was a total, like the point I showed you today. Are we about competition? Are we about, like, and competition doesn't mean, like, ready to fight. Competition means, are you about executing? Are you about being mentally tough? As we flew from New York City uh, to Toronto, the weight of what just happened really sat on my shoulders. Because as a coach, that's now the second time that our team folded. And ultimately, that turns the responsibility from the team to me. From New York, we went straight to Canada. 
And our mindset, you know, having losing that game, we didn't take it as an exhibition. We took it as a normal loss. So going into Canada, we were like, yo, we have to dominate these games. There was a different level of focus. There was a different level of, of uh, preparedness as we got ready to play Winston-Salem Christian. All right, you kind of see our energy change in Canada and kind of more so kind of start to find ourselves as a team a little bit. That was the first time in my own eyes to really see Darion. You know, he was the main factor in our team, for sure. And I feel like our energy, our spirit as a team, just, it was, it was way different. Like, we were determined and we played way harder. Uh, there was a bunch of joy on our faces. So, you know, that was a bounce back for us. Yeah, then we had Fort Erie on the home floor uh, of another opponent, which again is a common theme for us. Anybody, anywhere, anytime. They had the girls team, they had the JV team, everything. So we was in a hostile environment. Last game in Canada, yo. We Last game, country, give it all. It's in their home, bro. No matter what they do, we on their ass, real. Come on, same yesterday. Let's build. We build. Hey, hey, let's bro, do what we're supposed to do with OSL, bro. Let's go in and take that. We build it. We build it. Let's go. Let's go. Together on three, one, two, three. Together. Yeah. 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 We were ready to bounce back from New York. We was, we was ready to kill. There was a lot of smack talking before the game, and during it, I guess they thought we was weak or something. When I, when I dunked on dude. Yeah, I, I feel like I had to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to. The story of the Fort Erie game was Aiden Shirell. Aiden Shirell's emotion, Aiden Shirell's strong play really carried us to a good victory. That was probably one of the trips where I didn't know that we really had supporters like that. I remember seeing a kid have a prolific prep shirt, and I'm like, we're in Canada. How did he able to obtain a prolific prep? It is one of those shirts that even we wear. So that was the first time for us to really see like how much you know people look up to us. It was crazy, really. Just, I wouldn't expect us to have fans in Canada, and like they had our shirts on and everything. I think having those kids making the tunnel for us and doing all that funny stuff, like, I think that honestly just gave us a brighter side and a brighter perspective on, I mean, how many people actually care for us, how many people are rooting for us, and it's not, it's not like we're in this dark hole all by ourselves, like, we got a bunch of people on our side. They started to understand what it means to wear prolific, how you have to be at your best, uh, and if not, someone else is coming after you. Man, uh, our directors had a surprise for us when we arrived to Miami. Uh, that was pretty special. We traveled across the country for one game. I think that kind of shows how dedicated as a team and coaching staff we were to actually, I mean, playing against the top competition in the national schedule. When we pulled up to the, to the neighborhood, we were kind of confused on where we were going and then we we pulled up all the way to the back of the neighborhood and we seen that big ass house. We didn't expect to be staying there because nobody, nobody said anything about it. Yet. So when we got there, we was like, what? It was like a yacht next to it, tree swings and everything. It was, it was crazy. As soon as we stepped in the house, like we was amazed like how, how, how beautiful the house was, how big it was. You know, we did a little tour around the house. Yeah, we're super fortunate uh, to have Seth Cohen as a partner to our program. 
but it's really bigger than that. The Cohen family is family to us. Seth and Angeline, uh, his sons Logan and Gavin. Um, Gavin is a heck of a basketball player. Uh, Logan, a really good hockey player, although not a good knee hockey player. Um, and then Jackie and, and her husband, uh, or her fiance, Devin, and then Maddie as well, a heck of a horseback rider. Uh, we're just super fortunate to be family with the Cohen family, and that experience in Miami was one of a kind. For me, it was motivating. Just knowing that, again, basketball that took me to the point where I'm in Miami, staying in a mansion, like just this orange ball, but it was a blessing. It was, it was definitely like a fun experience and it calmed us down a lot more. It got the, like the jitters out of our body. This is the top three most important game on our schedule this year. And, uh, nationally televised, as big of a stage as it gets for individuals and for a group. And, and, and a big test of like, okay, let's see what they're really about. This dude's got 20 ball advice. Welcome in. We're very blessed to be here in, in Fort Lauderdale, uh, right down the road from Miami, where we'll play Columbus High School tonight. Uh, Seth Cohen has been fortunate enough to allow our team to stay at his house. It's an unbelievable experience for our guys and something we're very grateful for. You know, being a little kid, we dream of being in big games like this, playing against the top guys, big atmosphere, TV. We're in the heart of Miami tonight, Columbus High School. The Explorers make their first ever ESPN basketball appearance as they welcome in prolific prep. It was time to lock in because we had a tall task in front of us against the number two team in the country on their home floor without Tyron Stokes. Hey, man, it's a great test for us. I'm so excited to go to war with you guys. Let's all be in it together. Let's all be in it together and go have a ball. Okay, go. I don't know how many people were in there. It could have been 500, it could have been 1,000, but it felt like 8,000 people in there. All against us, too. Like, our huddles, we couldn't even hear coach. Like, it was seriously just us. And enjoy this. Enjoy it. That's why we're doing it. Enjoy it. Everybody enjoy this. Us against the world right here. Okay? Against the ball. The only thing on my mind is, you know, it's on their home court, it's on ESPN2 again. Like, this is a bigger opportunity than it almost was at Border League. Most importantly, I wanted to win, but I just didn't want to win. I, I kind of almost, I, wanted, I really wanted to embarrass them just so they could kind of feel a little bit of what we felt for the three months or however long it was since Border League. Cold first quarter for the Explorers of Columbus. How can it be cold in Miami? <laughs> Little pick and roll and the throw down by Aiden Sherman. Yeah, early on it was clear uh, this was going to be a different game than, than the game in Las Vegas. Knowing that they had already got a good piece of us, like by 30 the first time, I was just ready for my get back, you know, as a team. And I knew that we all had prepared for this moment. Basketball is a game of runs. You know, they, they got their runs, we had our run. So a 14 to 4 run. We need to come out of here even tighter, even closer, even more together. Because it was the same score at Border League. It was the same score, and then the thing went off the rope. It ain't going off the rope, sir. Just being able to be a part of that, even though I wasn't able to play, was still fun because I got to you know, still talk trash on the bench and still coach up my teammates. We all showed up. I mean, I can't even think of anybody playing bad. Everybody played good. It was just one of those games where they were playing good, too. This stuff's too important. You can't get in and make the same mistake. You got to fix it. You have to make a stand that it's not going to happen again. We played a great 12-minute stretch. Uh, with under two minutes to go, we have a nine-point lead on the home floor of the number two team in the country. Like we started to slack a little, and then every, everything went bad. Me and Darion, we ended up fouling out. You know, it was, it was just a tough situation for, for a lot of people, just kind of just get thrust in. Getting his own rebound. Final 
10 seconds. Caden Boozer. And Columbus is winning one. This could put him up three. So he, he just came down the lane with like no defense on him. He shot it. He made it. It was a killer because we had it. And that, and that feeling when you feel like you had it and you lost it, like it stings you for sure. We could see it on our team's face in that huddle leading into overtime, and we did not have the appropriate mindset. The last minute, 19 seconds of that game were an absolute disaster. Uh, that I take a lot of responsibility for as the coach because those are moments we should have been better prepared for, uh, we should have been ready for, uh, and that ultimately comes back to what do you do in preparation for the moment. And unfortunately, our guys were not prepared for that moment. You're in overtime just watching it, like knowing that if you were on the court, things can be so much different. I think that's like a big sign of how much of a family we actually were. I mean, all the Columbus kids, they went home to all their families. They're in their own territory, like having a Thanksgiving dinner, but like sacrificing like a family gathering for one basketball game. It sounds crazy, but it's like, it's our lives. If I do something, and you know, the energy is really gonna be there and it's gonna stay there. It was nice going to people's different hometowns and just seeing what it was like. I was like, coach. I gotta go back out. I, I think I'm gonna call it. In the internet, it was a bunch of questions like prolific prep, like are they the team? Make the right play! 